In my previous basics video I showed you that many ICs consist of at least one op amp. But if we go even deeper and inspect the schematic of an op amp itself, we can see familiar components like resistors, capacitors and diodes. But there are two symbols which seem unfamiliar so far. Those are so called bipolar junction transistors, or BJT for short, which come in two variations, as a NPN type or a PNP type. In general, those can be used to either act as an electronic switch to, for example, turn your high power AD on and off through your Arduino, or to amplify an analog signal to, for example, drive a loudspeaker. So in this video I will show you the basics on how to use such a BJT as a switch in your circuits without releasing the magic smoke. Let's get started. First off, I grab my soon to be electric switch, the BC637 NPN BJT and the load I want to turn on and off. In this case a white 1 watt high power LED with a 4 watt voltage of 3.1 volts. The three terminals of the transistor are called emitter, collector and base. And since they come in a variety of different packages, you should always check beforehand which pin is which in the datasheet. For my simple switch circuits, I connected the emitter to ground and the load between the supply voltage of 3.1 volts and the collector. But you should always be careful that your supply voltage does not exceed the maximum rated collector emitter voltage of the transistor. Next I powered up the circuits and noticed that no collector current was flowing so far. Because a BJT's collector current is the product of its base current and the value beta, which can be found in the datasheet as current gain. So let's fix that by connecting the base straight to the supply voltage, which lets indeed a rather big base current flow, but also destroys the transistor along the way. The reason for that is that the base emitter path basically consists of a diode with a forward voltage of around 1 volt. Thus every voltage above this 1 volt value will increase the current drastically. So we need a current limiting resistor to keep that under control. To calculate the necessary base current though, we firstly need the worst case value of beta to keep the circuit conservative. Then we can calculate the necessary base resistor and choose a real life one which is the closest to the calculated value. And just like that the switch circuit seems to work fine, but not perfect, because our collector current is smaller than what we estimated. The reason is a voltage drop across the collector emitter path of the transistor which exists in the saturated state and becomes even bigger in its active region as an amplifier. And in order to control the circuits with your Arduino, you simply need to recalculate the base resistor value with a 5 volt control voltage. But let's assume now that the load is not connected to the supply voltage, but to ground instead. This way the MPN transistor is not a decent choice for such a switching application. Thankfully though, there exists the PMP BJT, which is placed in the circuit similar to the MPN, but has all of the polarities reversed. In a nutshell, that means that a ground potential needs to get applied to the base resistor in order to switch on the load, instead of a positive voltage. Ok, moving on. Now if I want to control a bigger load, like the 6 volt 21 watt light bulb, it is pretty obvious that the small BC637 with a maximum collector current of 1 amp cannot handle this job. We need something beefier, like this BD535 with a maximum collector current of 8 amps. The calculations were pretty much the same as before, but it is noticeable that even by calculating with the lowest beta value mentioned in the datasheet, I did not reach the collector emitter saturation voltage. To do that, I needed to get closer to the maximum rated base current of 1 amp, because the current gain always drops quite a bit with a higher collector current. But nevertheless, the circuit did work in the end, which was quite hot. Literally. The transistor easily reached a temperature of around 70 degrees Celsius after only a couple of seconds. The reason is the power loss through the base current and the current through the collector emitter path, which is combined around 6 watts. And that is actually the biggest disadvantage of BJT's as high current switches. The power loss and thus the lower efficiency of the circuits. 
And since my base current requires around 420 milliamps, I can also not easily use my Arduino to control it directly. But luckily there exist so called Darlington transistors like this TIP142 which mainly consists of two bipolar transistors. This way its current gain is a lot bigger and thus the transistor only needs a small base current of in this case 8.5 milliamps in order to switch on and off our 3.8 amp loads which is even small enough to sync the current directly from the Arduino. That is why they are often used in variable lab bench power supplies to regulate the output currents. But on the other hand, they feature a bigger collector emitter and base emitter voltage, which can lead to more power loss. And with that being said, you already know quite a bit about bipolar junction transistors and how to use them as switches. I hope you liked this video. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.